All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2 Unit 11, talking about what happens when we screw around with our buffers. We're adding a strong acid or strong base to it. If we start adding a weak acid or a weak base to it, life gets a lot more exciting, but for now, we're just going to stick with a strong acid and strong base. So if you have a buffer and you add a strong acid or strong base to it, then it's simply a neutralization reaction. So all you have to do is just calculate the concentrations of your HA and A minus once all of the acid or base is reacted. And you know all of it has to react because it's a strong acid or a strong base. And then once you have that, then you have your new concentrations of your, strong, of your uh, buffer solutions concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base. And you can use the henderson hasselbach equation to calculate the new pH. It's super easy. Super, super, super easy. Yes. All right. So here's their little walkthrough to help you uh, just kind of keep track of things. So you've got a buffer containing a weak acid and conjugate base. So this is what we're starting with right here. And if you add a strong acid, then it's just going to go through here. Your strong acid, which is your H plus, is going to react with the conjugate base part of your buffer forming more HA. And then you'll be able to calculate your new values of HA and A minus using your equilibrium stuff. All right, your equilibrium calculations. And then once you have all those, you're going to use your Ka and your new concentrations to calculate the concentration of H plus, you get the pH. And then but uh, adding a base works the same way, but backwards. All right, so we're going to walk, they're going to walk us through a problem here. All right, it says a buffer is made by adding 0.3 moles of acetate, all right, and 0.3 moles of sodium acetate to enough water to make one liter of solution. Calculate the pH after 0 0.020 moles of sodium hydroxide is added. So we started with a buffer that was at this, and notice uh, the, the moles and the molarity are going to be the same because we're in one liter solution. That's nice of them. And then we added 0 0.02 moles of NaOH, so it's probably some solid sodium hydroxide. All right, so we're going to set up uh, what's called a before change after table here. All right, it looks a lot like an ice table, but it's different because it's calculated in moles instead of molarity because we don't really care about the molarity because we're in one liter solution. And then we're in moles, it's, uh, and since we're talking about a reaction, okay, we're just going to use moles. Okay, so we started with 0 0.300 moles of uh, acetic acid, 0 0.020 moles of our sodium hydroxide. That's from that sodium hydroxide that we added, added right? And then here we have 0 0.300 moles of uh, acetate ion. Okay. Now, when this reacts, we know all of this is going to be used up, and this is going to react with our acetic acid, right? Because this is our base and this is our acid, so this is going to go down. We they labeled this as the limiting reactant, which is nice. So that means this is go down, and for every amount of this that goes down, for every mole of this that reacts, one mole of this gets formed. All right. So once we've reached equilibrium, once our and it's not really equilibrium, right? Because it's a complete reaction. It doesn't go backwards because it's a strong base. So once this reaction is complete, we all have zero hydroxide left, and we'll be at point. 0.280 moles of acetic acid and 0 0.320 moles of acetate. All right, now we can take that and plug it into our henderson hasselbach equation. Now we can do a little bit of trick. You might say, oh, but Mr. McLeod, these guys are in moles and we got the problem, right? Because in the henderson hasselbach equation, these are concentrations. Now this is where life gets more exciting is because this is a buffer, it's all in the same volume. So that means our volumes would cancel because if we think about it, the concentration of A minus, okay, over the concentration of HA, this is the same thing as saying the moles of A minus over the liters of solution divided by the moles of HA divided by the liters of solution. And you should see that these liters of solution cancel. We'll just be left with moles of A minus over the moles of HA. Pretty rad, right? Anyway, so really we don't have to worry about the volume. You can plug it in if you want, but it doesn't change anything. It just cancels itself. So the ratio of molarity is the same as the ratio of moles. Okay, so we can just plug in these bowls values here. And so our pH, well, I'm sorry, and I should have flipped it. I, I, screw, I screwed this up because really, it was super, oh, this is right. They, they filed it up. What has gone on? A minus. I'm pretty sure this is backwards. Anyway, so yeah, 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 0 0.320. Yeah, they filed, this, is, this should be A minus. I was right. Boom, gotcha. All right, there we go. So 0 0.320 over 0 0.280, and then you add that to the pKa, and you get 0 0.4.80. Easy enough, okay? Now, just to convince ourselves that a buffer is actually worth making and dealing with, let's calculate what happens to our pH under different circumstances. So we want to calculate the pH of a new solution if you react five, if you have five milliliters 
of four molar NaOH and you've added it to one liter of water and uh, one liter of a buffer that is 0.3 molar uh, acetic acid and 0.3 molar acetate. All right, so we're adding this guy. So to calculate the A value or the A, we just want the pH. Um, so this is pretty easy. We're just going to find the moles of hydroxide that we've added, right? So that's the concentration times the volume. It's going to give us our concentration of uh, hydroxide or the number of moles of hydroxide in our solution. And then we're going to divide that by our new volume. So that's the 1.005. All right, and then uh, so we get moles per liter. So this is the new concentration of hydroxide, and they've taken the negative log of that to find the pOH. So you subtract that from 14. Okay, so the pOA or the pH is 11.30. So by adding just five milliliters of uh, this four molar sodium hydroxide to a whole liter of water, you've raised the pH uh, 4.3 uh, spots. Okay, 4.3 points. Now, if we do the same, but we have uh, our buffer here, okay, we have the moles of hydroxide and we've added it to this new uh, acid or this new solution here. Okay, and then this is the exact same formula or the exact same setup as we had before. The number of moles of acetic acid will go down by the amount of moles that we added, this 2 times 10 to the minus 3rd. So it'll go from 0 0.300 to 0 0.298 moles of acetic acid, and then therefore the acetate will go up by 0 0.302 moles. All right, and then we can plug that into Henderson Hasselbalch equation, and the pH will go up to 4.75. All right, and so it started at an original concentration of 4.74. So our buffer is quite effective. It only went up one one hundredths of a pH. Okay, <clears throat> so that's pretty easy. Now let's let's take a step back here and do what I think uh, tend to be the hardest types of problems here, and this is calculating how would you make a buffer for a specific pH. Okay, so this is a little bit of change of pace from what we just did. The last stuff's not too terribly difficult, but now this stuff, what I, I think this stuff can be ten, tend to be the hardest thing because it's like, well, where do I start? Okay, so it says here, it says we're calculating the number of grams of ammonium chloride that must be added to two liters of a 0.5 molar ammonia solution to obtain a buffer of pH equals 9.20. Assume the volume of the solution does not change as the solid is added and they give us the KB. All right, so we've started with an ammonia solution. So, and they give us a KB. So that gives us a hint here that we're gonna be reacting ammonia with water. So that, and this should be a, this is a weak base problem here. So we're gonna form ammonium, NH4 plus, and then also hydroxide. All right, so that's that guy. <clears throat> now, what we're gonna do here is we're, we're gonna set up an ice table. But we kind of have to work backwards a little bit. So we know what our initial concentration is of our ammonia. Our initial concentration of our ammonia is 0 0.50. Zero. All right, so that's our initial ammonia concentration. The water doesn't matter because that's not in our formula, so we're just going to cross that guy out. Now our ammonium here, our initial concentration of the ammonium, that's what we're trying to find. So we'll call that X because that's really what we're trying to find, okay? And our initial concentration of hydroxide, well, that is zero as well, okay? So we're starting off in this case, okay? So this is where we're going. Now you're like, well, we can't subtract a new variable. There's our variable right there. What we do know, though, is that our pH is equal to 9.20. So that means our pOH, okay, is equal, and this is at equilibrium, right? It's obtaining a buffer that's at that equilibrium. So that means our pOH is 14 minus our 9.20, okay? So we can take 14 minus 9.2. That's going to give us our 4.8, right? 4.80. So that is the pOH. So that means the concentration of our hydroxide when our buffer is all said and done is going to be equal to 10 to the negative 4.80. So we'll say 10 to the negative 4.80, and we get 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right, so that is the concentration of our hydroxide at equilibrium. Eight times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, so what this means here is that our hydroxide went up by that much. So that's our change in our hydroxide is plus 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right, and so the ammonia would have to um, also needs to go up by that much. So it's going to go up by 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. And this one, it would become x plus 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. 
All right, that means the ammonia will have to go down by that much. 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. And so we'll get 0 0.5, 0, 0, minus 1.8, 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now we're going to make an assumption here. We're going to make the assumption that uh, this value, well, it's pretty obvious that you know 0 0.500 minus this is just going to still be a 0 0.500. So this guy still becomes 0 0.500. All right. Now, uh, so now we've got just you know pretty simple problem here, right? We've got our KB, and we know this is our KB because it's a base. Uh, dissociation. All right, so our KB is going to be equal to the concentration of NH4 plus times the concentration of OH minus over the concentration of NH3. All right, so the concentration of NH4 plus, well, that's going to be our X plus our 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth times our uh, other guy here. So that's 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth divided by the concentration of ammonia. And the concentration of ammonia is equal to our 0.5. All right? And all of this is equal to our KB value, which is our 1.80 times 10 to the minus fifth. So many times 10 to the minus fifth, huh? All right? So now we go through and solve this. So we'll take, uh, so I'm gonna do some of it in our calculator. So just to give us a spot check, 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. So I'm going to multiply one or 0.5. Whoa, we're going to shooting. We're going to multiply by 0 0.5, 1.8 e to the minus fifth times 0 0.5, and we're going to divide over 1.58 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right. So I got 0 0.567, 0 0.5679. All right. And then we're going to subtract over our 1.58 e to the minus fifth, and obviously that's not going to change anything. All right, it, okay, fine. Uh, so that means our x is equal to 0.5678, Ooh. All right. instead, instead of uh, 579. But we're, we still only have uh, t three sig figs. This guy's only got two sig figs, right? So really this only has two sig figs, so it becomes 0.57. So that is the molarity, or the moles, okay, uh, or the that is the molarity of our sodium of our ammonium right so this is equal to our concentration of ammonium that we need to add all right so that means we have so this is where it gets kind of you got to think back to your solution stoichiometry a little bit or your solution math here so we got 0.57 moles of ammonium okay uh, in every one liter but we're wanting to add it to two liters all right so we've got to multiply this guy by two liters all right, and so that'll give us the number of moles of ammonium that we need to add. So 1.1, uh, I don't know, four moles. All right, so that's the number of moles of ammonium we need to add. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this guy here, moles of ammonium. If you don't hate me before, you hate me now. And we're just going to multiply this by its molar mass. So one mole, okay, and uh, so 14.01 plus 4.04, and 18.05 is our molar mass grams per mole, times our 1.14, we get 20.57 grams, 25, 20 point, so this rounds up to 21 grams, all right? We got the problem. <laughs> Crap. Oh man, I made a mistake somewhere and I'm not even quite sure where it was. Let me see if I can't figure it out here in a minute, then I'm just gonna give up and I'll delete this part of the video. Do to do, so let's recap here. So 0.5 minus X plus, I'm gonna move to the right. 1.58 times 7 minus fifth. X plus that times that times. 0.57 is our ammonium, where that's the concentration of our ammonium. Shoot, man, I don't know. So this is this is the POH, and this is our uh, that's the concentration we just got. Okay, um, 
So if we multiply that by 2, did I just screw that up? 2 liters times 18.14.01, right? Molar mass of ammonium. Molar mass of ammonium. Fourteen point zero one plus four point zero four, eighteen point zero five. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Anyway, uh, maybe I'll come back. I'll add a little thing if I can't figure out what I did wrong. But for now, uh, do practice problems, and I'll see you on the flip side. All right, I figured out what I did wrong. I was stupid. I was stupid. I didn't read the problem. So we're not adding ammonium. We're adding ammonium chloride. Okay, we're adding ammonium chloride here. All right, so it's not 18.05. All right, Shoot, maybe I should have double check this before I started recording again because now I look like an idiot. But anyway, so. <clears throat> All right, so that means we've got our ammonium chloride. So ammonium chloride is N. H4Cl, so that means its molar mass is one nitrogen, four hydrogens, and one chlorine. All right, we're going to add those guys up. So we have 14.01 plus 4 times 1.01 times um, 35.45. All right, so 14.01 plus, plus 35.45. All right, so 53.5 is our molar mass. Oh my goodness, I hope this works. Grams. All right, so we take 53.50 times 1.14, and we should get 60.99. So that's pretty dang close. And it's probably just a rounding error because there's a lot of math in there. So 60.9 is what I got. All right, so that's pretty dang close to this guy here. So, yeah, so like just to walk you through some of this, just give you some dimension, some some tips here, uh, just for troubleshooting when you run into a problem like this. Now, it, what I did was I looked through this guy here and I said to myself, well, my answer isn't appearing. So you might be tempted to just say to yourself, all right, well, I'll just choose the one that's closest, right? I got 20 originally, but that's that's pretty far away. So it's not that it's not close enough to say it's a rounding problem. So can't really say it's that one. Now I looked back at my math and I recognized some of these numbers. This number here is then is the concentration I got for the hydroxide. So this number here is to make you, you know, so make you think that you're done with the problem when you're actually not because you got to here's like, oh, that must be the answer, right? So, but that, but I recognize that that's my number that I got for the concentration or pretty dang close. All right. So I knew that I, I was on the right track. All right. And then same thing here, this value here, this 0.568, well, that's really, really close to the concentration I got 0.568. So again, I knew I was on the right track, but um, I knew that wasn't the answer because that's what I got for the molarity. Now, these other two values here are just made up numbers that mean absolutely nothing to us. I'm not quite sure. They've probably calculated this using some other mis commonly done mistake. Not quite sure what it might be. Obviously, it wasn't the commonly done mistake that I made earlier. But anyway, nobody's perfect. All right. So, but we figured it out in the end. Really, like I hit the stop button and I realized it right after I hit the stop recording button. And then I figured out what was wrong. Anyway, so do your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the flip side.